Well, there's the beginning. Because who would think that this would be that song? Just can't believe where my life was at. All that I know is my heart was broken. I don't ever want to go back. Ain't no explanation of how I saw the light. He found me and he set me free and he brought me back to life. Blame it on the transformation. Change down to the car. Seem fine. A million worlds was upside down, and it's right between me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter when it happened, at seven or ninety-five, move your feet, cause you are free. Yeah, we're more alive. You gotta shake, 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 like your chain, chain, chain. Brand new looks so good on you, so shake like you've been changed. Come on, shake.
Amen. Now you may be seated. Oh, praise God. Isn't it good to praise God by moving around a little bit? By letting him know that we care. Come on down, kids. Oh. Because you know what? Sometimes we tend to get way too grown up in church. We are God's children, and sometimes it's okay to dance around and have a good time because God loves us. It's good to see you all this morning. I have missed some of you guys. We've had so much snow and cold, and people have been sick. <clears throat> Was she? Everybody's been a little sick, some of me. But last week there were only like two or three, and the week before that there were only two or three. So it's good to see everybody this morning. I've missed you. You know why it's so good to see you all? Why? Why do you think it's so good for me to be able to see everybody? Did you know that you're my friends? You are. You're my friends. Some of you I know a lot better than other ones, huh? Because some, some of you I don't know quite as well. Because, like, I can't remember your name. Tell me your name again. Robbie? Robbie? What's your name? Help me. Olivia? Arabia. You've been here before. I knew you had. And, so, but, and, the, and then the rest of you, I know your names already really well because I, I see you more often. So some, some, of my, some of you are my close friends, and some of you are just friends that I haven't got to know very well yet, right? What? I know you very well, huh? Yeah. Yep, some of you I've known since, since the day you were born, and some of you I didn't get to know till later. But did you know that as well as I know you, and I know Corinne very well, God knows you even better. Did you know that? God knows. It says in the Bible that God knows how many hair you have on your head. He does. I know. You're like me. I have a lot of hair on my head too. I'm thinking that God spends a lot of time counting my hair. And, and how many of you, your hair falls out in the morning? Do any of you leave hair in the shower? Yeah, I leave a lot of hair in the shower. Yeah. And God still keeps track. Pretty cool, huh? He knows how many hair you have even after this stuff falls out because he loves you that much. And he wants to be your friend. And he just needs us to act like we're his friend. So what can you do to act like God's friend? Pray. Yep. Yep. Read the Bible. Go to church. Because did you know that when you pray, that's like talking to God? And you talk to your friends, right? And when you go to church, that's like going to your friend's house. How many of you like to go to your friend's houses? Yeah. Yep. And when you read your, when you read your Bible, did you know that's kind of like reading a, your love, a love letter from God? Have you ever gotten a note from somebody? A letter in the mail? Have you ever gotten one of those? Is that cool? Do you like getting mail? Yeah, me too. Well, that's what reading the Bible is like. It's like getting a, a letter from God. And God wants to tell you how much he loves you. So I want you to remember to do those three things this week, okay? I want you to remember to talk to your friend, read his letter to you, and come visit him at his house as, as often as you can because he's your friend and he loves you. Let's pray. Oh, Lord Jesus, I'm so thankful that you love us. I am so thankful that you love each of these kids. I'm thankful that you know us so well that you know every hair on our head. And I pray that you'll just help these kids to learn how to become your friend. And it's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. So if you guys want to, you can go to Children's Church, okay? Because I think Miss Rachel is all ready for you. All righty? Okay. And while they're going down, Praise the Lord. It's amazing how we can start a service off with dancing and shouting and just making a fool of ourselves for Jesus' sake. And then we can turn around and something like that can just settle our hearts down and just focus us on the reason that we're here. The, the only reason that we're here, and that's to worship Jesus, to 
show our love and adoration towards him and just to be drawn into his presence and uh, I think that the message this morning is going to be a message that is going to benefit everybody here. Even if you don't have children, even if your children are grown, even if you're single, even if you're a teen or a preteen, I think the message is going to teach you something very valuable this morning. Because um, I'm going to talk about what the Bible says about raising kids, raising children. Uh, first, I got to ask first though, has anybody mastered the art of raising kids? <laughs> Nobody here has a master's degree in child rearing. I'm disappointed. I thought for sure that somebody here this morning would, would know the perfect way to raise a child. I was listening to Caleb last week and they said, um, do you know the, the correct number of children to have if you really want to be stress-free? Nope, nope, it's not, it's, it's four. It's four. Well, I think it has something to do with the way you raise them too, Amy. Okay, you're trying. Well, see, that's, that, 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 that's the goal. We know we, you know, we, some parents give up raising kids, right? How many, how many of you heard parents say, my kid's just incorrigible? You know, I just, I just give up. What's that mean? Uh, you are incorrigible. <laughs> you can't be fixed. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. Put the tears away. Jeez, how wheeze. There's always hope because God works in all things, okay? But, you know, um, four kids, you know, but there is no perfect way to raise a kid. And each kid is different. We raised three completely different daughters, okay? And so what we were kind of hoping for is once we got Monica off and running, and then Sylvia came along, and then Julia came along, that, you know, we'd learn from Monica all the mistakes. You are, you are a guinea pig, you know? And so we thought, okay, we'll mess you up, but, but the next one comes along, she'll be a little bit better, and then we, we make mistakes with you, and then when it comes to the last one, I mean, she'll be perfect, For those of you who didn't hear, she says that she is perfect, that I did very well. Okay. <laughs> Kurt's over shaking his head, no, no, you're not perfect. You, you know, I didn't do so well. My kids all turned out okay, but, you know, I thought it'd be a breeze. You know, by the third one, I thought we had it made, and it was just as difficult raising the third one as it was the first one or the second one because they were all different, and no one thing worked. I wish I could stand here this morning and say, you know what, if you have children or when you have children and this is what they do, here's the remedy for it. It doesn't work. There, there are no easy fixes and there are no guarantees that your child's going to turn out okay, even if you do your best. Okay? But that shouldn't stop us from doing our very best. And I think that if we just take what the Bible says and apply it to our lives and do what it says to our children or with our children... I think that um, it, would, it would alleviate a lot of stress. Now, I, I really debated putting this, this, this first couple of scriptures in here, um, but I just had to. And this is mainly um, for the teens. So teenagers, may I have your attention? Do I have your attention? I want all the teenagers to stand up. How's that? That way I know you're listening. Josh, you're close enough. Stand up. <laughs> Okay, um, okay, parents, I want you to hear this, because this is right from the Word of God. I, get, I got like two verses. It says in, in Leviticus uh, chapter 20, verse 9, it says, listen, listen, teens, anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. Because they have cursed their father and mother, their blood will be on their own head. Now, that sounds like a pretty good way to get rid of the problem, Right? You mouth off your parent, boom, you're dead. You talk about that in youth? Did they like it? No. They hate it. I kind of thought they would. And, uh, it is. And it, and it says in Exodus chapter 21, verse 17, it says, anyone who curses father or mother must be put to death. So it's in the Bible twice. So it must be real. 
Okay? So you might want to think twice, Darian, before you pop off your mom again. Before you roll your eyes, Lexi. Okay? Before you ignore your mom, Joshua, who's ever nice, oh, the girls are getting in trouble. <laughs> Before you ignore what your mom's saying, think, I'll do it later, or mom doesn't know, okay? Bible says you're dead. But seriously, we're not going, okay, teens, you can go ahead and sit down. But we're not going to do that, right? Because that's, that's it's pretty drastic, okay? And, and that would just get out of hand. And so really, we, we took that out of context. But um, the Bible does give us... Um, some really cool ideas on how to raise kids and not to kill them, okay? I know sometimes you want to, we contemplate that several times with Julia, okay? And to be fair, Lynn understands how parents can shake their babies to death because of Sylvia. She would cry from the time she woke up till she went to bed. Never shut up. I mean, not just, eh, 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 eh. she would scream so loud, her belly button would pop out. Nothing's changed. <laughs> the only thing that's different, Bobby, is we were blessed with her. We warned you. Okay? Just like Travis. We warned Travis, too. We didn't tell Matt anything. We were just, you know, <laughs> guinea pig. Yeah. <laughs> just guinea pig. But there are, there are some really cool ideas, you know, in, in the Bible. And the, the, the best one that I've found so far is found in Proverbs chapter 20, where it says, start your children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Another translation says, teach your child in the way they should go. Start your child off right. What does that mean? Well, to me, looking back on my 30-some years of being a parent, I know that to mean that we need to start them off Knowing God. Randy, can you do something with this? I'm echoing all over the place up here. Maybe I'm in the monitors. I don't know. I shouldn't be in the monitor. But anyhow, it's still just echoing like crazy up here. But I, I think what we need to do is put our kids in the presence of God all the time. How do we do that? By being there ourselves. You're right. By being in the presence of God herself, by modeling a Christian life, a disciple's life before our children. You know what drives me nuts? I mean, it's really, it, I want to, I can't say that anymore. I'm recovering from anger. Oh, why not? I want to smack people. Okay? When I see, when I see, when I see parents come and drop their kids off for Sunday school and then leave, what are you teaching them? The church and God are for kids, not for adults. And I just want to shake them and say, you know what you're doing to your kid? Do you know the message that they're receiving from you? That when they become a teenager, they don't need God anymore. They don't need church anymore because, hey, mom and dad don't need it. And that just drives me nuts. We need to model Jesus Christ to the best of our ability to our kids, train them in the ways of God. Now, does that guarantee that, that your children aren't going to um, cause you headaches and heartaches as they hit teens and preteens and a little later in life? No, but it promises that when they're old, they'll not turn from it. They'll always remember it. Training your child in the way of God doesn't mean that they're going to accept God themselves or even be be close to God. But the seeds will be planted. The, 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 the information is there. The love, the knowledge, the atmosphere of God is in their lives. It's in their body. It's embedded in them. And they'll never leave them. And the Bible promises that someday they'll return to it. But they're only going to go as deep as you are. How's that? Children will only go as deep as you are. Okay, some of you are, are older and you've already raised your kids, right? And you say, oh, I blew it. I just can't help myself anymore. They're, they're done and raised. Guess what? Grandkids come next. 
And if you blew it with your kids, you have a second chance with your grandkids. And if you model Jesus Christ to your grandkids, if you live the life of God to your grandkids, guess who else is watching? Your kids. It's never too late for them to learn. But it's easier to teach them from the time they're tiny. Train your child in the way they should go, in the ways of God. And when they're old, they'll not depart from it. All right, parents, that's your job. To train your child in the ways of God, to, to, to do all the things. I mean, in the Old Testament, you know, the, the, they were, the old Israelites were, were, were instructed by God to tie the, the Torah on their, on their uh, garments and stuff. To always be reminded to teach them to their children. Whenever you have opportunity, they, they said, God told the, the patriarchs, he said, whenever you have the time, the opportunity, tell your kids about God. Tell them the stories. And so it hasn't changed all these years. It's still, it's still there. Now, let's go back to the kids because we don't want to kill you. Not really. We say that, you know, Lynn was always going to give them to the gypsies, but no gypsies ever came around. Okay. And, and so, but kids, you're not going to, you're not going to be, be killed. And they're not even paying attention to me. <laughs> Water boredom, Bobby says. That might be a little excessive. It's not death. Why don't we just remind them why they're here? Because here, here's, what, here's what it says in Colossians chapter 3. Uh, and teenagers, you've got to hear this again. This is very important. We'll wait. <laughs> teens you need to hear this and you don't want to hear this and, you, and you'll probably rebuke me for saying this but it says in Colossians 3 verse 20 it says children obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord and I know what you're thinking fathers we'll get the second part here in a little bit because that's that's where I struggled Children, obey your parents and everything, for this pleases the Lord. Okay? And I know, how many teens think your parents are stupid? Christian does. Your mom's not here, you brave teen. It's on videotape, though. He's still the only one brave enough to speak the truth. He's the only one brave enough to speak the truth. I mean, our, our kids, believe it or not, my kids thought I was stupid. Most of the time, they didn't think that we knew what we were talking about, especially when it came to boys. Am I right? Or dances, obviously. You didn't thank me back then. <laughs> Sylvia went to a 7th and 8th grade dance yesterday, and she texted Lynn last night. She says, thank you for never allowing me to go to them. Thank you, thank you, thank you, she says. But it's okay for, for teens not to think that the parents are smart because what happens is the, the, the brain monster comes and sucks your brains out when you hit 12. So Josh, be, be ready. Okay, and when your brain's gone, you think everybody else is stupid and you know everything. But the scripture says, children, obey your parents. That means listen to them. You don't have to agree with them. You don't have to like what they say. But you have to obey them. Because, uh-oh, that's right. <laughs> that's perfect. A year and a half old and she's got it. <laughs> that's awesome. That's precious. Because your parents... When they, when they don't allow you to do something or they say no or they make you do something you don't want to do, they're not doing it to be mean most of the time. They're doing it because they know what's best for you. 
because they've been there. They, believe it or not, your, your parents were young at one time. They were your age. And I know what I did back then, and so I didn't want my daughters to go through the same thing. And so when we tell you no, we mean no, because we love you. And so you need to obey your parents, even if you do not agree with it. Okay, that's the teens, but here's the deal. It applies to all of us who have parents. And all of us here have parents unless you're aliens. If you have a belly button, you have a parent. So if you need to check, go ahead. But I'm sure you're going to find one. And so that, that, that also applies to us where it says, you know, that we need to obey our parents. Because they love us. When they tell us things, they love us enough to, to warn us, to stop us. The next part, I really wish it hadn't been in the Bible. Because just like teens don't like verse 20, I never liked verse 21. And my daughters always reminded me of that last part when I always quoted them, children, obey your parents. And Sylvia especially remembers, it says, it says fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. Another translation says, uh, fathers don't exasperate your children. I mean, seriously, who uses that word, exasperate your children? Sylvia does. Of course she does. <laughs> Do not provoke your children to wrath. It's the same thing. And so I, I let, me, let me see if I can do this. It's someone here. Oh, that ain't it. Who took it? No, 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 no. This fancy thing doesn't work. <laughs> Hold on. I wrote, there it is, there it is. I wrote this out. Because in my footnotes of my other Bible at home when I was studying, it says, um, it says Ephesians, well, Ephesians 6, um, Ephesians 6, 1 through 4, which I'm going to get to. But it, it ties to this too. It says, uh, fathers must surrender any right that they feel that they have to, be, to act unreasonably toward their children. And I love that. Let me say it again. Fathers must surrender any right they feel they may have to act unreasonable toward their children. Let me give you a really good for instance. How many of you grounded your children for life? That's unreasonable. Seriously. You know, um, you're never going to date. You're going to date when you're 32. Seriously, you want your kid around to a 32? No, you don't. You're you back to the Old Testament, huh? You know, but this crazy thing. But what happens is, is that we get lost. I knew I didn't like this thing for a reason. Let's go here. Go here. Let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians 6, 1 through 4 says, it still says, children, obey your parents uh, in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, so that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy a long life on earth. Because it goes back to the, I'll kill you kind of deal, okay? But it says, fathers, and this it says, fathers, don't exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instructions of the Lord. Comes right back to the same thing. That means... Don't be unreasonable with your kids. Do not expect perfection. Do not expect them to live out your dreams. They have dreams of their own. Do not expect them to be somebody or something that they're not capable of being or desiring to be. But train them in the ways of God. And it's never too late to start. It's never too late. We have to continually pour ourselves in check. Where is my walk with God? How am I doing? Because usually the problem with your kid is not with them. It originates with you. And that's hard for a parent to swallow because anytime my kid screws up, I think, where did I go wrong? What was I teaching them? What could have I taught better? You know what I taught my kids that I wish I never had? Anger. Monica struggles with it. Julia struggles with it. (laughs) 
dude, you don't know the half of it. Julia and Monica couldn't wait to get out of the house. That's why she married you. <laughs> she said, you got to be better than my dad. No, he's not. <laughs> we won't go there right now. But, you know, get back to the seriousness of it all. It really is, you know, what are you teaching your kids? Train them in the way they should go. Children, obey your parents because they love you endlessly. And even if you don't agree with your earthly parents, the parent that loves you more than anything is your Father in heaven, God. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be more than you could imagine you could ever be. Because He loves you so much. So parents, don't give up on your kids. Keep on on trying. Keep on pushing forward. It's never too late. You have a lifetime to teach your children, not just till they're 18. But you can't run their life, but you can be the example. The last verse I want to leave you with, and I'm really not going to preach too much on it, because I, I think that people need to... Um, I think children would be a lot better off, and this isn't up on the board, uh, Tyler. It's Proverbs, uh, I think it says 13, 13, 24. And it says, and you've heard it before, whoever spares the rod hates their children. But the one who loves his children is careful to discipline them. Allowing children to make their own choices, to do what they want, and to tell them there are no consequences to their actions just proves that you do not love them. Proves that you do not care about them. The Bible says if you spare the rod, you hate your child. It doesn't say beat them senseless. It doesn't say beat them in anger. But children have to learn there are consequences to their actions. And so do some, some adults. To always make excuses for your kid, to always just allow your child to get away with things and, and say, oh, aren't they cute? No, they're not cute. Because we had some friends years ago. They're still friends, I guess. But they had a lot of little girls in their house. And we never invited them over. We don't want their kids in our house. They had no rules. They had no boundaries. They were into everything, did everything, and destroyed anything. So we didn't invite them over. If you love your child, discipline is proper. It's appropriate. It's not always a smack on the butt. But discipline is needed. And there is a reason that God made your derriere so big and so pushy, so cushy. It's to be touched once in a while. Because sometimes the head doesn't listen and the volume button's down there. When, when their ears can come up and hear what you have to say, you have to get their attention. But never spank a child in anger. I've done it. It's wrong. It's horrible. If you want a good lesson on discipline, watch Mayberry RFD, the Andy Griffith show. Remember what he used to do? He used to send Opie upstairs. And he told Opie, I'll be up in a little bit to spank you. That's torture. You know, go up and think about what I'm about to do to you. And then he would go up and, and talk to him. And out of love, he would discipline his son. Sometimes that's necessary. But usually, all we need to do is to tell them that it's wrong, issue some kind of punishment, and explain to them why it's wrong and why they're being punished. Be reasonable. Be loving. Be an example to your children. And they'll turn out okay. They'll turn out better than okay. God promises that. Train them up. Raise them up. Teach them. And if you don't know how to do that, if you don't know how to, to love God enough to teach your children how to love God, 
then please come talk to me or talk to Lynn or talk to another mature Christian who, who can help you and guide you and help you to get there. Let's pray. Gracious God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, we thank you, Lord, for, your, for this opportunity to come into your house. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us scripture as a tool to be taught, to teach us, Lord, how to, how to teach our children how to be um, well-behaved, well-disciplined, admired adults. But the biggest task we have, Lord, is not raising our children, but to come closer to you. And so, Lord, I just pray that you'll help us to somehow uh, develop a desire to live our life completely without reservation for you. Knowing, Lord, that we've messed up in the past and, and people may keep bringing up the past, but we can't remember. We can't worry about that. We can't help that. Lord, to make a change right now today so that we may bless our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. So, Lord, we may be a blessing to the children we meet in church, to our nieces and our nephews that, that we're around, to the neighborhood children, Father God. May we help raise them. May we help teach them. All this we pray and ask in your Son's holy name.